Hey everybody, welcome to worship. Hope you're having a great Memorial Day weekend. And as we start today, I wanna to say a special welcome to those of you who have family members who've paid the ultimate price for our country and for the freedom we enjoy today. We also wanna say a special welcome to those of you who are currently serving in the armed forces or a veteran that is with us today as well. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your service. Now, as we're gathered together today, I wanna to encourage you to participate. We're going to be praying together, singing together, and gathering around the Word of God together to learn and to hear from God. Uh, at the end of the show, I'll be back to tell you about a unique new opportunity you have to meet some new people, make some new friendships, and uh, deepen your relationship with Jesus as well. So I'll see you after worship. Welcome to Sunlight Community Church online worship service. We're so glad that you've joined us. Today, we're gonna to be emphasizing faith over fear and trusting God in the midst of difficult times. So thank you for joining your heart with our worship today. As a call to worship, uh, these words from Ephesians chapter three. Now to him who's able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power, which is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever, amen. To God be the glory. Let's join our hearts in worship of him.
righteousness alone Faultless stand before the throne Christ alone Cornerstone Weak made strong In the Savior's love Through the storm For our time of prayer this morning, we're going to allow these words from Ephesians 3 to guide our thinking in our prayers. I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. So this morning, we want to draw to our minds and our hearts' attention the great love of God, how long and wide and high and deep it is. And so I invite you to a time of praise, to praise God for his great love. Are there ways in which even this last week God has shown his favor toward you or displayed his love toward you? Take a moment now to thank him for it. Also encourage you in light of this great power of God to lift your requests before him. Whatever's burdening you, whatever's troubling you, please know that it is not beyond the power and ability of God. He can do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. And so I encourage you now to even pause the video and offer the things that are troubling you before this great God. Now let's pray together. Lord, we thank you so much for your great love. We can't even begin to imagine how powerful your love for us is. We ask and pray that you'll help us, that you'll make us more aware of your presence, even in the midst of difficult times, and draw us close to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley Bless your name, oh yes I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days, yes I will. not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out you're working all
central part of any worship service is drawing comfort from God's Word, opening it up and feeling His Word enter our lives, drawing off its strength. We've been focused on the Psalms, Psalms that give us faith over fear. And today we get to a wonderful Psalm, Psalm 91. I encourage you to have a Bible out and be following along. This is a wonderful Psalm. Here's how it goes. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This psalm really is a wonderful shield and assurance against fear. Now, my experience is this, that this psalm will become more important to you the older that you get. You know, the Bible says that we ought not to worry, that we should not be anxious about anything, that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. So the Bible's really clear about the fact that God doesn't want us to worry or be anxious or be fearful. And when we're young, of course, that's easy to do. And it's mostly easy to do because of ignorance. Uh, in general, when you're young, not that many bad things have happened to you yet. Uh, you have an experience that this world is really full of difficulties. And so as a result, you almost in a strident, prideful way say, okay, I have nothing to fear anyway. And so as a young person, you tend to live without worry, fear, and anxiety. But as you get older, you'll experience how this world really is. You'll have close friends who will be diagnosed with a terrible disease. You'll know people who all of a sudden, with no warning at all, went financially bankrupt. You'll begin to have friends or close family members who will die or be killed in an accident. You'll know people who all of a sudden, personal relationships fell apart because someone did, did them wrong. And not only will you know other people in your own friend group or your own family, but some of these things will start to affect you and you'll realize, wow, there's a lot of trouble in the world, and these things could happen to me. And as a result, the older you get, uh, the more dear this psalm will become, because it really does stand as a shield uh, against fear. Now, to talk about how the psalm works, I really want to distinguish between the real troubles we have in the world and the reaction that those troubles cause inside of us. And I really want to be clear about this because the world truly is filled with troubles and the Psalms are very realistic about this. You see it here in Psalm 91, all the kinds of troubles that are really there in the world. This Psalm speaks about the fowler's snare and deadly pestilence. It speaks about the terror of night or the arrow that flies by day. It speaks of the pestilence that stalks in the darkness and the plague that destroys at midday. Now, of course, uh, especially at this time with the coronavirus pandemic that we've been going through, uh, the pestilence and the plague, uh, of course, that immediately stands out to us. But this psalm, it, it has as an idea all the things that could happen to us. Take as an example just this phrase, the fowler's snare. Maybe you don't know what a fowler's snare is. It's the trap that people set in order to catch birds. So if you're a hunter, how you catch a bird. And of course, if you're trying to you know, set a trap for a bird, you'll do your best to hide it. You'll have some kind of bait to lure the bird there. And here's the idea. 
that in this life there's all kinds of traps that are set for us. We don't see it, they're hidden. Uh, there's something that lures us in, something that catches our eye. Uh, we go to partake of that thing and all of a sudden, wham, it's got us in its clasps. Uh, you can also think of the terror of night. You know the interesting thing about terror of night? Night is when you're the most vulnerable and the most unaware. You're not expecting bad things to happen. You're in the safety and comfort and security of your own home and you're not protecting yourself, you're asleep. And yet, you know, in life, this is somehow, sometimes when it happens, when you're not expecting it, when you feel comfort and secure and you feels like nothing could pierce this moment, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, and you weren't even ready for it, trouble comes. The psalm also talks about the arrow that flies by day. And here it's just the opposite. There are times when in the middle of the day, we're totally aware, we sense, okay, something could happen to me, but it happens so quickly. It happens so instantly, the way an arrow flies, that even though we're doing our very best and taking every precaution, we can't stop it from happening. And this is the point I'm trying to make. This psalm is so realistic about the troubles of this world. And I just want to make that point as clear as I can. There is real trouble in the world. The Psalms don't try to paper it over. In fact, the Bible uh, tells us why the trouble is there. Well, we're all sinners, and a consequence of our sin is the trouble that occurs, and maybe even more than that, that God, because he's totally just and totally righteous, there's judgment that is upon this world and upon our lives because of, because of sins, and they're like warnings. Here's what the trouble of this world means, and if you're in trouble right now, you should know this. God is trying to get your attention. He is trying to make it obvious to you. You can't make it without him. God's put trouble in the world. He's given consequences to sin so that we'll turn back to him, so that we'll repent, so that we'll seek him. And listen, there may be any number of things that are overwhelming you right now, and in fact, God's allowing those things to overwhelm you so that he can get your attention. You can't make it without him. Uh, listen, the Psalms don't try to paper over trouble. They want us to understand the trouble is there so that you'll turn back to him. Now, I, I want to distinguish between the trouble in the world and the reaction to the trouble. And instead of fear, there are three messages that ought to guide our thoughts. The first message really arises out of the names of God that we find in the opening verses. Notice the names of God. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. These are four different names on the opening verses. The first, most high, the Hebrew word is Elyon. It speaks about God's supremacy and preeminence and talks about how there's really nothing that's above him, that he's above it all. In the shadow of the Almighty, the Hebrew word for Almighty is the word Shaddai. And it has to do with God being the God of the mountains or God of the wilderness. And it speaks about his power over chaos, that you know, if he needs to, he can part the seas, he can tumble the mountains. He has all power and all strength, even over every chaotic force that we might otherwise be fearful of. The next name, I will say of the Lord. The Hebrew word here is the word Yahweh. It means I am. Uh, God is the root of all existence. He is self-existent, and there's nothing, no power in this world whatsoever that has anything in and of itself, any power in and of itself. It all has as its root of existence God. He is the I am. And then finally, uh, not only God, but my God in whom I trust. Uh, this God is mine. I belong to him. I trust in him. And these four names for God are there to produce this powerful first thought. And here it is, my God stands powerfully over everything. The psalm wants that thought to go from your mind deep into your soul. 
God wants us to just acknowledge and recognize this fact. My God stands powerfully over everything, over every last thing. Okay, the second important thought that arises out of the psalm comes from eight powerful promises that you find at the conclusion of the psalm. We'll count them up. Because he loves me, says the Lord, one, I will rescue him. Two, I will protect him. Three, I will answer him. Four, I will be with him in trouble. Five, I'll deliver him. Six, I'll honor him. Seven, I'll satisfy him. And eight, I'll show him my salvation. All these promises are there at the psalm to comfort and encourage us. And there's ways in which we should personalize them, I think. Now listen, this is really important to say. Uh, there are some people who have interpreted Psalm 91 to mean that, all right, if you trust in God, then from here on out, it'll be smooth sailing. In fact, there won't be any trouble in your life. Your life will be trouble-free. And they sometimes point to uh, words like these in the psalm, uh, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent, or here, you will tread on the lion and the cobra, you'll trample on the great lion and the serpent. And they say, see, uh, if you trust in God, then the promise of Scripture is that no problem will ever come your way again. But I want to show you that that's not true. Right in the middle of these eight promises, it doesn't say you'll be troubleless. This psalm says, I will be with him in trouble. To interpret this psalm as though no trouble is going to come your way is not what this psalm is saying. It's saying that God will be with us in trouble. In fact, this is so true that uh, we know this if you read the entire Bible, that there is someone who wants us to interpret this psalm as though there is no trouble once you trust in Jesus. That someone is Satan. How do I know that? Because in the New Testament, Satan shows up to Jesus and tries to interpret this particular psalm for Jesus. In fact, he draws on these words when Jesus is being tempted by the devil, the devil takes him to the highest point of the temple. He says, throw yourself off. And then he quotes Psalm 91. He says, because God will lift you up in your hands by his angels so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Satan says, see? I mean, if you trust in God, Jesus, then there is no trouble. And Jesus says, no, that's not it. Don't put the Lord your God to the test. It's an interpretation of Satan that you know, if you're a Christian, no harm will ever come your way. That's not the promise. Here's the promise. I will be with him in trouble. Now, of these eight promises, I think it's just a fantastic idea to pause for a moment because we want to meditate on these words and allow faith to be built instead of fear, to personalize them. And so you might say something like this, because... I love you, and I, I love you, Lord. I know that this is true. You'll rescue me. You'll protect me. You'll answer me. I know you'll be with me in trouble. You'll deliver me. You'll honor me. You'll satisfy me with long life, and you'll show me your salvation. And I encourage you to just meditate on these eight promises here, the first major thought that comes from the psalm is, my God stands powerfully over everything. The second major thought that arises out of these eight promises, God is with me in trouble. Boy, those are two powerful things. That God stands over everything, and he's with me in trouble. Now there's a third major thought that arises, mainly out of the main image in this psalm. Here's the main image. We see it in these words. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. There's this idea of us finding shelter in the shadow of the Almighty. And then this image is really fleshed out in these words. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you'll find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. The picture here is of a, a bird that has young chicks. And that mother bird hovers over that chicks and spreads its wings so that the chicks don't face the, the hot sun or the wind and the rain. Uh, the mother you know, takes those things and covers the, the tiny chicks. You know, right before Mother's Day, I had a friend 
who sent me uh, a link to a couple of videos. Uh, there is, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, a falcon cam where they've placed cameras in the nest of this falcon. And this falcon, of course, first had eggs, and then those eggs hatched, and now there are tiny chicks. And uh, we can get a really a, a very close-up bird's-eye view on what's happening there. And it's amazing because this mother falcon is caring for and loving and providing for her chicks. She's feeding these chicks and uh, fending away any dangers. It's really a beautiful picture. And you know, one of the things that really struck me in one of the videos that he sent, uh, the falcon flies up and then gets into the nest. And you see just these tiny chicks at the bottom. And that mother falcon stands over them and spreads her wings out so that the sun won't beat down on those little chicks. And anyway, what this psalm is saying is there is a picture of God. He loves us. And although we might be like frightened little chicks, you know, vulnerable and even scared at the things that might come after us, he's powerfully providing for us. He cares for us. He loves us. And he shelters us under his wings so that we find shade. And that leads now to the third point. Uh, the third point, my God stands over everything. That's the first point. He is with us in trouble. And now the third point, God provides ultimate security and protection through it all. Now I want to lean into this point because I really want us to think about what's being said here. There is the trouble in the world but then there's our response to it. And these three points ought to fuel our response. But now here, I'll, I'll talk about it this way. Each morning, uh, I've tended for the last couple of months to go for a walk about six in the morning. Uh, I really love it at that time. Uh, it's quiet, the air's cool, the sun starts to break and you see the sunrise each morning while I'm on my walk. Uh, the clouds are very beautiful in the sky. I hear birds chirping and going about their business. There's flowers budding. And as I'm taking my walk every morning, uh, I would just you know, look out in the world. It's very peaceful. And if I didn't know any better, I'd say, wow, all is well. I mean, it's beautiful. God's in control, and his creation is you know, singing his praise. But you know, when I get home each day, uh, the newspaper comes from my driveway. I walk outside, and I get the newspaper. Uh, when I open it up, uh, it paints a very different picture than what I saw on my walk. In fact, this morning I decided to do this. I turned on headline news for just 20 minutes. You know, it was amazing because when the news came on, there was this teaser. And the teaser line was this. There's a, a government official, and his line is this. We're in deep bleep. Right after the opening teaser of what was going to be in the news, uh, there were all kinds of commercials. One of the commercials were pointing out that you might not have enough place for all your stuff, and so you, you should buy some storage. Another was talking about various diseases that you could get. Another was talking about how prescription drugs might be too expensive. And then there was this teaser for another show that was going to be on the channel later about how there are juveniles who are on death row right now, convicted of crimes that they might not have been convicted of, and they're totally innocent, but they're about to be put to death. And of course, the idea is, that could happen to you, so tune in. Um, then the news got going again. The news, of course, is dominated by the impact of coronavirus. One of the big stories was how that's going to impact youth sports and how kids might not get to play their sports. Of course, in the middle of that, there was a graphic about high unemployment and job losses and panic and stock market crashes. Um, then there was a report that uh, people are becoming restless. There was a report that the test they developed um, might be failing. There was reports of restaurants closing. There was reports of people fighting in the streets over the shutdown. And then they went to the weather report. Uh, in the Midwest, there were going to be severe thunderstorms and damaging wind and hail and potential isolated tornadoes. And then down here in Florida, there would be a tropical storm two weeks before hurricane season even starts. Uh, they cut to commercial again, and the one commercial that caught my attention just before I turned it off was there was this woman who otherwise has a very clean home, 
but the commercial was pointing out that she may have overlooked tiny dust mites that were living in her homes and bed bugs. And, uh, you know, when they shore, there's this look of panic or horror. Of course, that could be happening to you as well. And listen, I only had that on for 20 minutes. And it just became obvious to me. The world, the enemy, uh, our media are trying to send a very different picture to us. They're trying to inspire fear in us in order to manip manipulate us. You know, the news is trying to manipulate us to sell advertising. The advertising is trying to manipulate us with fear in order to sell various different products. And so I just want you to notice and become aware of the way in which this world is conspiring to try to make you afraid. Now listen, it's not like there's not any troubles in the world. Of course there are. We've been really clear about that. The Fowler's snare is there. Deadly pestilence, the terror of night, the arrow that flies by day, pestilence that stalks in the darkness, the plague that destroys at midday. It's very real, but there's a message. And the message is so clear. Here it is. You will not fear if you trust in God, if you believe in him. Then you'll have these three points. You'll know that my God stands powerfully over everything. You'll know that God's with me in trouble. I'm not alone. I don't have to face this alone. Uh, also, God's providing ultimate security and protection through it all. I mean, sure, bad things could happen, and I probably will get a disease, and I could go bankrupt, but ultimately, at rock bottom, I'm secure. I am secure. And so... Finally, because that's true and I trust in God, I don't have to respond with fear and worry and anxiety. And you know, at the center of this psalm, it's so beautiful because it's really the central picture and message of God, which is substitution. You know, that mother bird who spreads the wings over the chicks you know, the, the danger, the sun, the, the trouble is there, but she takes it so that the chicks don't. The sun beats on her so that the chicks are safe. And that's really the heart of Christianity, that God himself entered this world and enemies pursued him. God's judgment was on him. He stood in our place. He took the punishment. He took the wrath. He took the trouble so that when we take shelter in him, we have ultimate peace and security and calm. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize, faith over fear. Listen, the troubles, they're very real. You don't have to pretend they're not there. In fact, the Bible wants you to know they're there so that you'll be overwhelmed and driven to God. But when you have God, you have something that's absolutely priceless. He stands over it all. He's with you. He's with you with what you're going through right now. And no matter what it is that we have to face in this life, he provides for us ultimate, at rock bottom, deep peace and comfort and security in every area of life. So I urge you to trust in him. What a tremendous message we've had today, that God protects us and cares for us in the way that he does, that he's with us, even in the hard things that we go through. Uh, I hope that that message, you meditate on it and helps you through your daily living to live for him. And that's important. I want you to live for him. If in the middle of this message, you came to realize God is getting your attention and he is calling you to faith, and if you're ready to respond, and why not today, I urge you to respond and trust and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And if you do that today, would you please let us know, text this number, and tell us that in fact, you are trusting Jesus for the first time, or you're coming back to faith in him. We want to hear from you. But I'm also encouraging those of you who have been Christians for a long time to really live your lives for him. It's important that in each week, each worship service, as a part of our worship, we pledge ourselves in service to God. 
we say, okay, I'm ready once again. I'm revived once again. I've been encouraged by his word once again to lay aside all my worry and concern about my own life. I lay it down. I deny myself and I follow after Jesus. And I encourage you to use all of your gifts, all of your treasure, all of your talents in service of God. Live for, your, for others around you and in Jesus' name, show the love of Jesus and spread his good news. Uh, I encourage you to give generously. Thank you so much for your generosity and live lives that are pleasing to God in every way. And as we conclude this service, I want to encourage you with this blessing. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus, may the love of God, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve Jesus. All right, I hope you enjoyed worship today. And more importantly, I hope God has been speaking to your heart and, and leading you to take a next step to deepen your relationship with him. If you've decided to follow Jesus today, let us know. Text the word decision to 772-277-7072. That's also a great number. You can text any questions you have about the faith or if you're in need of anything, uh, just let us know how we can be serving you. Now, an important part of worship is taking a next step in connecting with other believers. The Christian life is not meant to be lived alone. And especially now in these times, we need each other. So I wanna encourage you to consider joining a community group. These are groups of people just like you and me who get together each week online uh, to study the Bible and to learn about each other's lives, to support each other. We have groups starting next week for men and women, co-ed, uh, groups that meet each night of the week, uh, groups about a variety of different topics. There's definitely something for you. Now listen, those groups are launching next week, but I've got some special insider information for you. If you go to sunlightchurch.com right now, you can sign up for a group today. And that's important because a lot of these groups are capped to keep the membership manageable so we can actually develop relationships. So go to sunlightchurch.com, click on connect, and then join a group. And you can see all of the different groups that are available, including one that I'm leading on Wednesday nights. So we hope you can join one. Finally, today I want to encourage you. Another great next step to take is supporting our work financially. It's really important that as Christians, uh, we respond to God's generosity in our life by being generous as well. If you want to make a donation, you can also find that at sunlightchurch.com just by clicking on the word giving. Okay, everybody, enjoy the rest of your Memorial Day weekend, and we'll see you back here soon.